whoa, how'd I get here? Well, I'm at home. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that means it's time to make another video. Well, well, hey guys, welcome back. Well, today's video is going to be, as promised, about removing some of the backlash from the Smithy. Okay. So as you remember, if you watch my videos, I have the uh, 1340 Max. All right. The Smithy Granite 1340 Max. So what we're going to do today is we're going to work on this X axis that's here and try to remove some of the backlash out of it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the camera up here. I'm gonna put one on digital readout right here and another one down here on the, uh, on the hand knob. And we're gonna do a baseline and see how much backlash we currently have in the Smithy Granite 1340 Max after now that we've had it for almost a year and we've used it and kind of got it broke in a little bit and we'll see what we got, okay? So let's set up and see what we have here. All right, so if you notice there, guys, when we were taking our initial measurement of the backlash, that I was using a dial indicator and not the digital readout that we installed several months ago. Now, there's a good reason why I had to use the dial indicator, and I'm gonna make another video. The very next one that I'm gonna put up after this one is gonna be about the digital readouts and the problem that I encountered trying to measure the backlash using the DRO. All right, so I want you to come back and watch that. It's gonna be good. All right, guys, so you can see there that we did our check on the backlash, and our initial measurement right now is about 27 thousandths of backlash on the x-axis, okay? Now, that's a lot of backlash. So now what we're going to do is we're going to begin the process of adjusting out as much of that backlash as possible, all right? And we're going to do that by taking the little threading dial off of it, and then there are four adjusting screws, three on one side, and one underneath that's very difficult to get to, but I'm going to get the camera down there, man, and get it as close as we can so that you can see what we're doing. All right, so let's go get our handful of tools, and let's take this backlash out to the best possible, and it's still engage and disengage without too much restriction. All right, we need to take this threading wheel off here to get access to the adjusting screws that are behind it, and it's just a couple of Allen head cap screws, and this thing's right off and out of the way. All right, after you get that thing out of the way, there are three adjusting screws there in front and then underneath the one I'm working on now is the fourth one. And the fourth one's a little uh, aggravating to get to, but it's just a simple matter of loosening the jam nuts on all four, adjusting those adjusting screws in, and working the half nut lever up and down several times while you do it. And after you get it good and snug where you can still you know, open and close that half nut without too much trouble, then set your um, jam nuts back in place. All right, so now we get everything back good and snug. Now we're going to check that backlash again and see what kind of improvement we got. All right, here we go. We're going to see what kind of improvement we made. And boy, look at that. That's a lot tighter, man. Only four thousandths of backlash, turning it in the positive direction. All right, now we're going to do the negative side. Zeroed out the dials, and now we're going to check it in the negative direction. Let's see what kind of backlash we have. Oh, that's fantastic, man. Only four thousandths in the negative direction, also. That is a huge improvement. 
on, I'm gonna put that threading dial back on, and get everything snug back up, and we'll be good to go. All right, this has been a good project, and I'm so glad that I went ahead and did this on the x-axis. All right, well, we've done pretty good. We've gotten that backlash down to four thousandths. We went from 27 thousandths to four, just by making some adjustments on those screws, and I put the threading dial back on, got everything back right, and I'm just super happy with that, man. Four thousandths, that's pretty good. And hey, it may stay like that for a few months, and then I have to do it again or whatever, or maybe I only have to adjust it once a year, I don't know, but we'll see. So anyhow, you can, you can take a lot of it out by making those adjustments. So I wanna to recommend to you that if you have a Smithy and you feel like it may need to be adjusted, you know, put your dial indicator on it and just turn that thing and measure it, zero your dials out and see what you got. All right, everybody. Well, I appreciate y'all watching this video where we adjusted out that backlash and I hope you come back for the next one. Well, I guess I might as well go out the way I came in, see if I can't concentrate hard and beam back out of here. Machine shop. So I hear old Hank back here. Come here, Hank. Come here, boy. Come here. Come on. Come on. Oh, Hank. Come on. Come on, boy. Come here. Come here, Hank. Come on up here. All right. Here's old Hank, guys. He's been out here with me, palling around. Come on, Hank. Hank's a good dog. All right. Good dog. Good dog. Hey. Yeah. Oh, he's a lover. He's a lover. Yeah, he's a lover. All right. There you go. Hey. To find out, let's try this again. Just scratch that. My good boy. He's a good dog. He's my good fella. This is my best buddy out here in the garage. Oh, Hank. Ugh. Blah, blah, blah.